silly season was thrown into a new scale of silliness when Lewis Hamilton shocked the motorsport world in January, and since then it's been all about who's going to replace him in 2025. A current F1 driver, perhaps the young protege Antonelli, will Sergio Perez be staying or not in Milton Keynes and Red Bull? And where will Carlos Sainz be come the new year? Well, a certain two-time F1 world champion, world endurance champion and two-time Le Mans winner has decided to, well stop the noise by ruling himself out of a switch from Aston Martin after signing a somewhat vague multi-year extension until the end of 2026, perhaps. Well, I'm Bryn Lucas and joining me to talk all about this is Hayden Cobb. First of all, Hayden, is this a shock announcement? Uh, probably not particularly. I think whenever a driver stays at a team that's not that's not a surprise if he'd gone to a different team a Mercedes Rebel then yes definitely but nah not not massively and we'll get into why that isn't a massive shock now all right let's do it <laughs> that was very abrupt all right all right you lead this conversation Hayden why is it not well let's start with this fact that it is a, a multi-year deal which seems to be until the end of 2026. Why can't they just say it's a two-year extension? Because it sounds like uh, there's potential for extensions and add-ons to it. Um, yeah, Al- Alonso's just spoken in his uh, post-announcement uh, media debrief, uh, and he was asked asked about that. And, and yeah, they made it clear that he would definitely be racing for the team in 25 and 26. Um, but there is options for going even longer, and that doesn't necessarily need to be in Formula One, he even hinted at the, the Aston Martin Valkyrie project and there's talk of obviously that uh, entering the World Endurance Championship. He's been there with Toyota. Uh, so so even if, if he chooses to, to retire after the end of 2026, he could still remain as an Aston Martin driver in other categories. He, he says he loves racing and he loves driving and, and in his future, that's what he wants to do. But at least we know for certain for the, the next few years, he'll be an Aston Martin F1 driver uh, and going into the new regulations as a 45-year-old, he, he's hitting Fangio's age in terms of uh, yeah, his, his, his longevity. Yeah, it's one of these uh, just sometimes they don't know when to stop. But with someone like Fernando Alonso, he's still doing it, isn't he? And we, we actually spoke um, on the podcast and the videos on the post Grand Prix video recently about Fernando Alonso. Whenever he does very well, he's very, very good to tell everyone just how well he's done, isn't he? So he's still got that passion and desire to keep competing. Yeah, definitely. And he's he's clearly seen enough from Aston Martin to know that, or at least have the belief, that that is the ticket to get him for fighting for wins and world titles uh, in, in the future. Now, I think if we, we're honest, and he's probably honest, that isn't going to happen this year. He might be able to fight for wins and podiums, who knows, but not world titles and, and probably not next year. But 2026 is the big one, obviously, with the end, uh, the sorry, the rule changes and Aston Martin starting their partnership with Honda, who right now are producing uh, the engines for the world champions. And it's proving very, very strong in their arsenal. So, yeah, he, he, he has seen enough from, from the Honda deal that's coming. He has spoken to Honda chiefs and, and obviously he's clearly probably seen some numbers um, of how their 2026 preparations are going. Uh, he's still encouraged and still is, is in full belief of the Aston Martin team in terms of their, uh, their own equipment, their upgrades both on the car but also in their factory, their new wind tunnel. Uh, and also their their interest in other in other hires, uh, adding to their technical team. So all the elements cut together, he he can see this as being his probably his his best ticket to fighting for world titles, hopefully by twenty twenty six. There's so much it seems to get through with this because I mean Lawrence Stroll must have absolutely sold him everything he could to keep him there because there was so much noise about where Fernando Alonso was going to be next season. It seemed that every seat was a possibility. Could he go back to Mercedes and fill that empty seat for a year before Antonelli comes in in 2026? Will Antonelli be there next year? And this seems to have slammed the door shut on that one. And that's probably by design from Alonso. He did say the other day, and I've got to read it because I want to make sure I get this right. He said, I chose when to go from a team, when to join a, che- a team. I chose when to stop F1 and I chose when to come back. So he's very much of a mindset of no one tells third person Fernando what to do. Fernando tells people what Fernando's going to do. Yeah, and he he stuck to his guns on that um, when when sort of quizzed on, so how realistic was it that you were uh, lining up a move to Mercedes or even Red Bull? And he did openly admit that the conversations were had. He ensured that he got all the information 
uh, of all his potential options um, out at, at this present in time um, and stack them up against each other. And, and I think for, for if we look at the Mercedes situation first, he saw what was realistic at most a, a probably a two year deal before they'd looked to get someone else in with all due respect if, of the Antonelli that yeah, you've mentioned there um, and obviously their difficulties at the moment and it didn't seem like they were offering uh, an endless supply of, of, of opportunity to, to him for, for that and the same probably can be said at, at Red Bull for largely similar reasons e- even if they don't have uh, a position necessarily open to him at, at this point in time we obviously don't know what is going to happen uh, with their full lineup for for the future so in terms of where he saw security, in terms of where he saw potential, and in terms, I guess, where he felt comfortable, he'd be known as the number one driver, uh, like regardless of who his teammate is, and he can make it his team. Uh, I know it's yeah, it's got Stroll's name ab- <laughs> above the door, and he is yeah, Lawrence Stroll is, is the owner, but it's definitely Fernando Alonso that leads that team on on the racing and the driving front. So yeah, I, I would say that everything came together out of his options and, and Aston Martin is still his his best bet. Yeah, it kind of seems like it's not just Formula One based, this decision, as you were saying, that it kind of, Aston Martin have been very vocal, very obvious about their intentions across multiple platforms in motorsport that they want to succeed in GT and the rest of it and in Le Mans, they want to just, they want to hit the ground running and take over. And do you think that this one here is what has swayed Fernando beyond it? You know what, you sign for us, you will be a proper, proper uh, legacy driver for us. You'll be able to go and do whatever you want to do, maybe even run the team in the future. Do you think those sorts of discussions have happened or is it just literally just sign for two years, see what happens? No, that definitely sounds like that's part of the the deal. Whether it's a a genuine sort of thing that he what he wants to do and believe, or, or whether it's just the sweetener, um, I guess we'll we'll wait and see. But yeah, he called this uh, his longest ever deal in in his career, um, which I think is, I guess you could add certain years of contracts and take some off the others. That that might be true. I'm sure Alonso isn't lying there. But but what he basically means is. He sees uh, his longest stint at one team being being Aston Martin. Obviously, you had in the, the current two years that he would have completed at the end of this year, plus uh, up to 26. I think what he means is, yes, you're right. I think even if he does leave Formula One in 2026, which, which is by far, by no means certain at this point, this far away, um, he sees his future in their other racing programs and being an ambassador and, and all that comes with it. So, yeah, yeah, he generally sort of sees that as his his, his future. Certainly not a bad brand to be attached with, is it, Uh, for your legacy for when you move on. But let's just stick with Formula 1 for a second on this one, because you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier on, that Fernando Alonso has been extremely vocal about the team and the direction, let's just say, maybe uh, are they going to be pushing to get themselves onto the fourth position in the constructors? And they seem to be almost there if it wasn't for the boss's kid. So (laughs) what is going to go on there? Do you think there have been some discussions around the number two driver in the team? Or do you think it's a case of, Fernando, here's some money, here's a deal, this will keep you happy? It's a good question. I... I, I, there certainly won't be a mega name, huge name, well, former world or reigning world champion put into that car alongside Alonso. And if there is, I'm happy to come on to this video and go, oh my goodness, <laughs> what has happened here? <laughs> but if for all intents and purposes, I think we can assume it, it's going to be Stroll uh, for as long as he wants it. And, and, and you're right, it, it provides a dynamic that probably suits most of the people involved in it i'm not sure lance stroll is actually going to be that delighted with it but yes he has a experience he needed to follow and to 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 to, yeah to learn from let's say um but in terms of what alonso needs that's he's got what he's got what he wants you're right about the the world champion fighting situation and stroll basically costing the team points to not be up in the constructors I, I guess the point, Alonso's point of view is, as long as the car can fight at the front in his hands, I don't think he'll mind too much if Aston finish second or third in the constructors. Obviously, he'll, he'll want to win it, want to win it all. But I guess, let's be honest, he is a racing driver, and they are all out for for themselves. So if he can make his car be uh, top of the drivers' constructors, but it happens to be yeah second, third. Uh, in the constructors I still think he'd he'd take that any day um, over say the other way around so 
yeah, it, it's it'll be interesting to see what happens with that second seat. I think those questions inevitably are going to come in the coming races, uh, particularly once we know what's happening now with the Mercedes second seat uh, and once Red Bull start to sort out their plans. Because Stroll's position is arguably the next in the the pecking order of of what will be um, one of the most attractive seats to those who need it. Um, Obviously, we're not really sure entirely how this impacts, say, Carlos Sainz, but he's still looking for a drive and he knows now that uh, at least one seat at Aston Martin is is not available. But if Stroll was to call time on his his F1 career, which I'm saying there's, there's no indication of that, but... Could it be a uh, yeah Spanish duo there? Could could Sainz and Alonso team up in Aston Martin? It's it's not uh, feasible, but not, not impossible to imagine. I imagine that would be an that would be an awesome lineup. That would be a brick. Can we have that, please? Can can we have that one, please? Wouldn't it be amazing? It would it would be great. But I guess from Sainz's point as well, you could say okay, Alonso's now out of the running of the driver market. Surely that opens his opportunity up at. Mercedes a bit better now. I know Mercedes have yeah, they've said they're going to wait until the summer. They've got to look at their options. They have time on their side. Uh, I don't think Alonso's uh, commitment to Aston Martin is, would have really changed their plans long term anyway. Um, but yeah, Signs at least knows he's got one less problem to worry about when it's uh, getting himself a drive for for next year and beyond. So when we say at the top of this that the noise is, he's decided to kind of uh, dull the noise, mute the noise around the silly season. What it's kind of done is stoke the fire more because what we've now got is we've, the musical chairs, one chair has now been removed from the whole party, hasn't it? And now there's more drivers fighting over less seats and we still know, or we still don't know what's going to happen to Sergio Perez, as I said at the top. And that's always a big question. So this story feels like, okay, the Fernando bus has now been parked, but that doesn't make the entire thing just completely disappear overnight it's going to make Toto Wolf have to rethink some of his conversations he's having is he going to go back into the garage up the way and talk to Jos Verstappen again at a Grand Prix have dinner with him and get those um, journalists circling like vultures as you guys do so beautifully (laughs) or will it change just quickly go back to this Fernando Alonso uh, story for a second because just uh, well last week wasn't it Adrian Newey was being courted unsuccessfully it seems by by Lawrence Stroll did that have some part to play do you think it was Mr Stroll trying to show Fernando Alonso that he was serious in developing the team even if Adrian Newey was very unlikely to move I think you're spot on it's uh, that's largely what um, Alonso alluded to now obviously no names were specifically mentioned or anything um, like that because that's not normally the the done thing but there's there's clearly um, a move by Aston Martin management to to show Fernando that this team is definitely committed and will do anything in its power to fight towards the top um, whether it's infrastructure whether it's engine partners and indeed whether it's technical personnel um, and then fairly clearly targeting uh, the best brains and the most successful technical chiefs uh, up and down the panic shows to well not only to Alonso but to the rest of the F1 uh, panic that they, they mean business and, and and I think that yeah that's like we said that's a key factor in giving Alonso belief in this Aston Martin project uh two years on from 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 what he saw before uh and, and, and easily these two things could be intertwined if 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 uh Newey sees that Aston Martin are keeping hold of of their their strongest drivers and he's always uh, said that Alonso was one of the drivers that he he would love to have to work with um maybe it, it all comes together perfectly but t- time will tell on that front and it's a long long way to go there but he, regardless in terms of the news today it, it's worked well for for both Aston Martin and Alonso Do you know I hadn't thought about that I hadn't thought oh maybe this is going to make someone like Adrian Newey suddenly go hello Alonso's there I've always wanted to work with him he's staying at Aston so if I want to work with him before he retires from Formula One that's where I need to be so it does develop the story a bit further also and you mentioned it a little bit earlier on Fernando will be staying with the team that's going to be powered by Honda from 2026 and he's uh, he's had a fair bit of history with Honda in his career I mean not huge successes with his world championships or his WEC championships or his Le Mans wins but other than that, Honda has been a mainstay of his. Uh, if you put Toyota Gazoo Racing to one side and Renault to one side, <laughs> he's had a lot of success with Honda. So it does it does reignite that partnership. Yes, it's an interesting one that you certainly would have thought was a 
could be a, a delicate relationship. Um, I, I, I would assume t- 10 years has, has moved on since the, yeah, the real catastrophe that was uh, McLaren Honda. And, and when they signed Alonso, it, 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 that was the whole package of the dream, the dream team. And it quickly became a nightmare. Um, Alonso said, and sort of very uh, honest in terms of saying that, yeah, clearly they didn't get the engine uh, right when they joined um, 10 years ago. They've learned their lessons and, and they've clearly made progress. And now, yeah, now they supply the world championship uh, winning team. Uh, and I, I think there was always this this faith. That's why he joined Mc, or came back to McLaren originally um, in the first place. They believed that, that Honda could get, could get it right and deliver what they want. And and I guess you would say that from a Honda point of view, they are happy uh, with this situation. Now, it's, it's difficult to know how much uh, and has who, who has how much say in these signings in this scenario, given it's an engine part that hasn't started yet. But they must be happy enough. Uh, he has spoken to the Honda management. He said he had not he hadn't been to um, the engine factory whilst uh, in Japan last week, but had spoken to the management. So he's clearly had uh, information given to him and, and data and, and and what he needs. Um, but. Yeah, they, they, they see maybe it's water under the bridge 10 years on. The call of GP2, GP2 engine is is no longer uh, such a barbed feeling. And, and who knows if they go and have success together, it, it's come full circle. It's it's the perfect end to that story. So they, they haven't really got much to lose in that sense. Could be the end of what may be a beautiful relationship. That is it. Look, Hayden, thanks so much. It's a very exciting time. Mike Crack has been very... Uh, happy about this he's been announcing just that it's a fantastic deal for the team and i'm pretty sure that everybody who's watching this will agree any final thoughts though about this should we be you know lighting the touch paper for big news to come off the back um we'll see i mean i know that's a a difficult answer but mercedes themselves have said they're happy to wait and take their time and potentially until the summer months to to make a decision on who becomes the lewis hamilton replacement of their team Red Bull are probably the the biggest unknown it was interesting to say after Japan that Perez wanted or said that he believed uh, his future would be sorted in the coming weeks where a straight way after that both Horner and Marco said we probably won't make a decision quite so hastily like that so and then of course there is the Verstappen uh, factor and what happens what happens with him so I think immediately we won't see a big chopping and changing because, like you say, it t- just takes Alonso's name out of the situation. But what happens next with Mercedes and Red Bull is definitely the the, the next key moves t- to be seen. Uh, obviously, Mercedes have to make some sort of move because they, they're going to be changing their lineup for 2025, uh, whereas Red Bull could, in theory, keep it and, and, and keep as, as they are. Um, but once those two teams are settled... Um, then every everything else sort of comes into play of that that next group of of teams, let's say, and, and the likes of what Audi will or won't be able to offer drivers and and the future that holds for those teams. Well, it's going to be exciting. What did Lewis Hamilton do in January when he kick-started all this silly season business? Well, Lewis Hamilton started it. Fernando Alonso has tried to stop it. We know that's not going to be the end, though. It's going to be much more discussion, particularly about who is going to partner Fernando Alonso next year. And that's all going to depend on what Mr. Stroll does and what Mr. Stroll Sr. decides to do as well. Hayden, thank you so much as always. And thank you as well for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting, enjoyable, and maybe a little bit educational as well, but not too much. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.